Hey all, uh, good morning. Welcome to the One Minute CM show. Uh, thank good you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pleasure sure. being here. Thank you for joining in. And uh, friends, new friends, and the students uh, who are following Dr. Anshu Arora. A uh, quick introduction, uh, Dr. Anshu Arora is a principal of MIT International School, uh, which is based out of Gurugram. And she has around 27 years of uh, teaching experience and administration experience, uh, managing and administrating a school. She is also an author uh, for a couple of books. Uh, we will discuss about that uh, in detail, uh, pretty interesting books. And she also believes that, you know, though she is a principal, you know, her learning, uh, you know, skills doesn't end. I mean, the learning uh, time doesn't end. Uh, she's got pretty good uh, achievements. Uh, she has done in a short duration of time. Um, she has been awarded as uh, the best master team trainer for CB from CBSE. And she has also been training uh, a lot of principals and teachers. She has also been awarded as uh, Jewel of India Award. Uh, and she is also part of uh, Linka Book uh, Recognition. She is also awarded as the best principal by CBSE, best guru by Olympiad uh, Foundation. Winner of uh, Cyber Fair and uh, a topper in her uh, hotel management uh, career when she started. So, and many more. I mean, the list goes on. So, it's very tough for people like me to remember all this or, you know, talk about all her achievements, but pretty interesting uh, topic. And I, I'll, she's done her PhD in uh, uh, and research in a topic called Media Habits for School Children. And I'm sure, you know, we, we've come to a point where this particular research, what she did a couple of years back, uh, has come to limelight right. and limelight and, you know, there's a lot of importance uh, in the current scenario. So, ma'am, that, that's from my side. Maybe you can give a quick introduction about yourself. We've, we've got five minutes where you can talk about yourself and then we'll get into the rapid fire questions. Uh, so Thank we'll you, Ravi. I think those are very kind words and uh, I think let's start with the rapid fire though i'm very scared <laughs> but let's still start that no no please please do talk about your books uh, before we get into it so that our audience know uh, the books you've written so that uh, you uh, know, okay you. Uh, then i'll start with that uh, you know writing was uh, like my hobby you know i never really thought i will seriously take it up to be very honest with everyone the very first time i wrote uh, a poem which was on homework was just to please my English teacher because she was very impressed with people who could write. And I was this grade three or grade four child. And, you know, I had no idea uh, what I should do. Just, I just scribbled on a paper. I folded it. And without even a stamp on it, mm -hmm. I sent it to Hindustan Times. And they were very kind to print it. So that's where my journey started. It wasn't very serious at that point, mm -hmm. but I continued writing for all my school magazines, college magazines. And, you know, when I became a teacher, even then I used to actively contribute. And uh, I have never really taken out time to write. I've never told myself, OK, I'll sit at six o'clock and write. If mm -hmm. there is a thought in my mind, then I capture my thought. Like I used, I used to carry a small diary with me all the time. Now, of course, it has been replaced with iPhone. So my note section, if anyone has to see, will have a lot of unedited stories and phrases and verses going on. Because if there is a thought, I just feel that I should capture it there and then. So when it comes to writing, yes, I have written Comptitude, which is computer and aptitude books, right from grade one to eight. So because I was a computer teacher, I taught computers for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And since I moved to management and I be I've been a principal now for like 14 years. So mm -hmm. I think uh, I wanted to merge this computer and aptitude and how we have all seen in today's time COVID, how I think being computer savvy has become one of the most important tools with everyone. So the book is slightly different in its context and approach. Then mm -hmm. I wrote two fictions. One is uh, The School Tales, which has mm -hmm. a lot of real incidents which I have seen, I have uh, personally experienced or heard. Because, you know, you look at my life, I've spent, I think, all my life in school, sure. either, as, either as a student or a teacher or a principal. So my journey has been so much intervened here. So this, I think, is my play field. This is my life, literally. So it has some very meaningful lessons. And my only objective in writing that book was that there are a lot of, you know, uh, social, emotional, mental, 
uh, physical barriers which are there in the children and hesitations. So mm. through those, through that book, I wanted to actually, you know, uh, make it easy for children and to understand and accept themselves. Because when any human being will accept himself, then the right journey starts. You know, instead of staying in that, uh, having a knotted mind and having confused thoughts, which is not good. And uh, say bye to goodbye is my tribute to my college. I did my hotel management. Mm. And I think the world doesn't really know what a IHM college is. You know, probably a lot of people think they only cook. It's not cooking. It's like a very, very comprehensive course, which is three years spread over 30 subjects. Mm. So I wanted to highlight all that, plus whatever happens in the college. So it's a very simple, sweet story. And then I've also got a book published, which is Hindi poems, Kahi An Kahi. Okay. Because I don't know, uh, kuch hai, kuch, uh, my father was a Hindi professor. So maybe whenever I write poetry, that naturally comes only in Hindi. Uh, I cannot write a prose in Hindi, trust me. But all my poetry till date, you know, in Hindi, the only thing I, I actually could write till now was poetry. So I've compiled all that in a book. Then I have worked with CBSC in editing and bringing a lot of their books. And of late, the last work that I've done is the student manual by CBSC, which is going to be shared with all the children. So this is where the little journey of books is. And I think being an author is a wonderful journey because I don't know how many readers will read, but there is a lot that you learn and you grow as an author. So my journey as an author has been very, very satisfying. Yeah, and, and there are two parts to it, you know, one, you know, being an author for, uh, you know, creating content, which people would like. And yeah. the other part is creating uh, content, which is more uh, related to you, what you've experienced, what, you, what you've seen physically. Yeah. So oh, that's, uh, that's very tough. It's like having a piece of your heart actually literally beating outside of you. But then, you know, sometimes you have those thoughts and you want to share because I think even in all our failures, uh, mm. There lies a place and, you know, which children need to see. We read a lot of success stories, mm. but I think it's equally important to read and know where people fail and how they fail. And it doesn't matter how many times you fail. I think what is important is how you will rise back and how you will reinvent mm. the wheel. So those are the messages which I want to give to my children, to all the young adults, to everyone, actually. Cool. That's an awesome journey, ma'am. And uh, yeah, shall we start with the rapid fire questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So as a principal, uh, what is that comfortable dress code you prefer uh, going to school? So from the uniform, oh. you, you've come to a different attire. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is that you really felt comfortable in the entire journey? Uh, you mean my transaction from uh, a teacher to a principal? That's where it is. So initially, I think I was very, I thought that when I become a principal, I'll get really connected with more and more children. I think for mm -hmm. me, I'm very, very passionate about children. You know, any decision that I will ever take, it is. Mm -hmm. it always has to be child friendly. It has to be child centric. And that I think makes my job very easy. Because whenever there is something, I just have one yardstick that whatever we're doing, is it supporting our children? Is it being good for the children? I love children. So my, you know, my connect with more and more children can, could only happen if I moved up from being a teacher. You know, because in India, we have this exclusive uh, rooms and classrooms and every teacher is a king of their own uh, specific classroom. But if you want to reach out to a larger community, then you have to be at slightly different position. So I have loved, I have enjoyed this journey. It has had its own challenges. I think as a principal, no two days are alike. You know, of course, these months are also very different for, uh, from what I had ever thought, experienced, or imagined. But even when we had this regular school uh, previous to COVID, I think mm -hmm. every day brings in something. And the fact that, you know, you delve deep, you get into some kind of a solution finding, you try and work and everything that we do might make an iota of difference to some child. I think that keeps me going. So that's the spirit. And uh, it's been a very, very beautiful journey. Well, we also have some questions coming in. Uh, this question is from Shilpa Reddy. 
She is also a founder of uh, an organization called uh, Buddha Teachers Academy, trying trying to inculcate uh, the principles of Buddha into uh, teaching. Uh, so she is asking, I would really like to know how would de uh, she suggest dealing with students in school with lower economic groups, lack of technology, and no online classes until the lockdown ends. So I, I think you know what she meant is yes. Uh, I think she has really raised a very poignant issue it really uh, concerns you know if we look at our country basically the a town no one mm. is suffering because all the elite schools in india they have pretty much switched to online mode which is very good and very synchronous because uh, i know about my campus and i'm obviously you know trying to figure out what other schools are doing so our classes are going trust me as the way it used to go in school so there is nothing which is lacking but if you go to remote places, deep down villages and areas where technology is an issue, those are certain areas, but we need to tap, we need to understand. But one thing very good is that uh, at least the mobile is available to a very, very large section of society today. So mm -hmm. even if there is one mobile at home, I think online teaching can be enabled. Yes, the parent will have to make a little sacrifice and, you know, give the child the mobile. So mm. not necessarily uh, that a child has to be on laptop. Our classes, which are right now working on MS Teams, mm. so it can be actually accessed through a phone. Mm. So the children, uh, and then they, we also have EWS children. We also run, Am Amity also runs a school called uh, Amitasha, where we only cater to girls. Uh, from the underprivileged category. So there we have even started classing or, uh, classes on WhatsApp. And, you know, mm -hmm. so whatever mode is good for them, I think we have to reach out. And there are also some areas where my one of my students, he is somewhere deep uh, in some remote area of Bihar. And, you know, he could not. He had a lot of issues with net and connectivity, time, during which we were doing classes. So we send them recordings. And we can make small videos and share those with children. I think if government can pitch in and start channels where they can start some bit of more synchronous studies, I think because television again, you can mm. uh, you will reach out to much more. Uh, yeah, something uh, like you know, a much can, larger yeah. community. Yeah. Yes, yeah, CBSE, uh, yeah. CBSE is doing again. it. Yeah. We have uh, Diksha and we have Sayam and we have many other portals where things are happening. But uh, through this uh, television and even phone, today learning is not difficult, actually, you know, because knowledge is at the click of the mouse. What is What we need to really worry about is what beyond these lessons a child needs. Is the child happy? The biggest concern is, is this, is he getting into depression? Is he mentally, physically, emotionally taking care of himself? Because this is actually a grim time. You know, none of us had ever seen this, known this, to stay locked up in an environment and work. You know, grown-ups can still make meanings out of it. But then there are homes and families where there could be various issues. Uh, you know, yeah. even if uh, I have to say that, then there is child abuse. There could be other issues. So we have to be I'm more worried about those areas, that my children stay safe, not just my campus, all children ac across, emotionally stable. Because one month of studies here and there, we can still make up. Okay, yeah. But uh, they should not be uh, impacted in any way that, you know, which becomes an irreversible yeah. thing. So that should be the biggest concern on minds of all education. Yeah. And, and this is going to be here for at least a couple of months and might repeat. So we might have such yes. comments. So I think yes. uh, and the right time we take corrections, be prepared for certain things which we have not planned for. Earlier. Yes, there is a lot of uncertainty. So yes, but uh, you know, 21st century skills are all being used. I think next time in school, we I won't have to take a workshop. I'll just tell children, look, COVID was and remember, we did online classes. You got onto it, you understood. So everyone is doing strategizing. They're taking good decisions. They're solving problems. You know, we found a way to do a PTM. Then we found a way to do an orientation. Then we found a way to do an inter-school competition. So pretty much everyone is trying to just look at the calendar and through technology, just find a way to make that a reality.
very happy we've made uh, many many things you know which uh, initially with the start of it day 1 i really had no uh, faith you know i was like you know how is this going to happen overnight but teachers have really risen to it i think the kind of support we've got from parents teachers it's awesome yeah. because you know teachers are not used to making a ppt and entering the room every day they are a lot of our teachers are chalk and talk and they know a particular uh, technology or a pedagogy which they it's ingrained in them so mm. to change it overnight and to make it so good i mean the classes are trust me flawless mm. if you were to see any recording of my classes you will be amazed and the best is that i can hop into all my 80 90 classes which run in a day so that gives me a lot of you know space to see things observe maybe bring in changes so it's become it's you know there is something which was impossible which we really have made possible and now now coming to your favorite movie and uh, what is that one movie you would suggest to all your students they should watch now now that they have access to the internet i think every two years i see one or the other good movie coming and we actually make it a point to take our children like of late i remember this movie uh, goal which was very mm-hmm. nice then chuck the india so uh, three dears in some ways yes it brought a mm-hmm. lot for teacher community so to say you know uh, mm-hmm. a lot of these mental issues which were not really discussed i think we have to give credit to that movie that then that became a national debate so i think uh, uh, thanks to our uh, bollywood they are looking at the mm-hmm. sector and they are bringing in good movies and it is not very stereotype anymore i think movies have now become very different even uh, the i think the uh, channels which have started and uh, you know on prime video and hotstar mm-hmm. so there's a lot to watch yeah one has to understand what needs to be looked into but in terms of content we have a lot of good content around uh, so please tell us about your school life matlab you know you are in a different phase now matlab school mein to masti ki hogi boring like <laughs> in, not forget in one word i like to say boring you know if i was to tell what i did in school today to children they'll actually laugh at i also my kids also laugh at me and sometimes i think ha ah, thodi kam masti ki <laughs> that really the fact i think i was a very sincere student uh, i had two elder brothers studying okay. in the same school okay so there were certain limitations to uh, i think what uh, i could do and how i became i was a very focused child i wanted to excel in studies i was at you know teacher ka bachcha pyara bachcha mm-hmm. apple of everyone's eye that kind of a child a very goody goody child who was always interested in scoring well i think i i was rather a simple sincere little boring child <laughs> it, it it might be very tough because i i had this situation you know uh, during my college and you know a uh, couple of uh, sessions during my school days being being that the you know apple boy or blue eyed boy it was very uncomfortable when your teacher especially my english teacher you know in my college days and then you know plus two plus two uh, plus one plus two case then or uh, around 10th class uh, english and hindi was only taught by seeing me sab class mein sabhi masti kar rahe and all that you have to just watch the teacher okay. the entire class for 45 minutes keep smiling keep nodding your head yeah you know, that that so, is very it- difficult it is very tough i think i was always very tough with myself uh, but somewhere i think it helped me because in it has inculcated a certain discipline in me till date if i have 10 or 20 tasks to do you just have to tell me my timeline that this has to be finished and you know i kind of find a way to do it because uh, my day will not wrap up unless my work wraps up so mm. i think that as a little kid somewhere got inculcated yes it was serious it was you know i could have done a little more fun and here and there but then i think uh, life is uh, pretty vast we don't have to worry that i couldn't do it in school so now i when i meet my friends they now see a newer me actually <laughs> never knew i was this girl who could be so chirpy and you know who could actually be open for a um, lot of things you know they always thought this is a girl jo bunk nahi karegi you know koi mazak nahi karegi type of a thing so theek hai i have now lived i'm now living my life and 
it becomes like a whole circle somewhere. So you start from somewhere, but ultimately the whole circle, the full circle has to be there. So pretty much achieved, happy about it. Okay. So uh, somebody says school days, how was your childhood and school days? What is that class which strikes in your mind and what is that moment which you always remember? Oh, um, I think uh, school was very good because, you know, like I told you, since I was this kind of a child, I was really loved a lot. I think uh, somewhere I was also quite pampered and spoiled because, you know, if there would be some inter-school competition, they would just pick up my name and send. So I got a lot of attention. If there was a special assembly, I would be on stage. So yeah. I was, uh, and then I also had a very good set of friends. And it was a very homely environment for me. My elder brothers were there in the same campus. For me, the school looked so much like home. So I, there was very little line that I could draw. You know, my father was a professor. So a lot of teachers would even come home and talk, you know, discuss things with my father. Even when my father went to school, he was really respected and, you know, looked up to, you know, Professor Saab is there. So it all was like a little community that I grew up in. And school, I think, I think all, all days, I would say, uh, very, very nice. Uh, beautiful time. Uh, Inter-school competition that you can remember. Uh, ah, oh yeah, I have to tell you this. This is the basketball competition. And like mm -hmm. I told you, I was this extra sincere child. So I would actually, I never used to play. You know, every time I went to the field in the games period, I used to just sit down on the steps and just tell my games teacher, sir, I am not going to play. I have stomach ache. So, you know, he'd just smile at me and he wouldn't, you know, one day he just walked up and he says, look, Anshu, you can't have stomach ache every day. So I don't care. You are the tallest girl in the class. You know, I'm like tall. So he says, I don't care. All I know is you better learn basketball and you better go for inter-school basketball competition. If you don't do that, you know, I'm going to give you a C grade in your class 10th uh, final report card. <laughs> he actually caught me there. You know, I was petrified. I was like, I really thought Daniel sir is going to do that. He would really, mm -hmm. I don't know. But I, I bought a basketball. And that evening, I started, uh, you know, my brothers were there. So I had support and I started dribbling mm -hmm. at home. Trust me, within like four to five days, I learned how to dribble. I learned how to, you know, hit a basket. Hitting basket came easy because I think mm. probably the height and everything. Of course, too much running in the ground, I still didn't do. But I went for this and till date, I feel so good. You know that uh, you can tap into any area. You know, I used to always feel that we sports do sports. Today, of course, that also is one thing I regret now. But I could do it just because the teacher actually, you know, could make a difference. He reached out to me. He knew exactly what words, you know, he could have threatened me many, many ways. But the only mm -hmm. one thing he told me was, I'm going to give you a C grade. <laughs> and that's one thing I could not accept. So he, he, I, knows, he knows <laughs> your, what is your weak point. He knows yeah. his and, you know. uh, so, and he has to like really say, Binaka smile, this is not going to work here. Ab to khelna padega. And four days, mein, I was on the field. And I learned, you know, I, I just told my brother, sikhao, sikhao, karna hai, karna padega. I'm not going to take this. So like this, you know, children should do the same. Right? From this example, I tell my children that, you know, you don't know a skill. You have never tried it. You're very bad at it. Does mm -hmm. not matter. Just get up, do it. It doesn't matter even if you fail. But like today, I remember this basketball match much, much more than, you know, even winning the first prize in a debate competition. It's because it brought in a lot for me. It opened up something for me which never existed. So those are, I think, real experiences in life. It was a very, very beautiful thing. I can never, ever for, you know, forget. Until date now, when we in school, when we do this inter-school basket ball match or competition, you know, even my coordinator and my games teacher says, ma'am, pehli basket aap mari hai. So, you know, it feels good. He, you know, there's something in sports that I still feel good about. Maybe there are not too many games that I can play, but I can always take a basket and I can at least try hitting it and try dribbling it. So that was a very, very beautiful experience. Yeah, so we need that push, up, you know, that yes. from yes. the teacher. The first uh, thing, try karo, I think you should do it. Yeah. I mean, 
आता है नहीं आता वो ही करते रहते हैं जो हमें अच्छे से आता है और हम बच्चों को यही सिखाते रहते हैं दैट फाइंड योर पैशन पैशन ढूंढ लो पैशन का काम कर लो दैट ओके पैशन कर लो लेकिन जिंदगी जी लो Sing, dance, play an instrument, go in the field, do adventures, adventure sports, write something. You know, even if you're bad at it, I was very bad at some point. Trust me, I still am. I'm still learning. So it doesn't matter. Explore whatever you can. You know, a lot many things will open up for you. So it's very very important to you know each human being. I think there is a book inside each one of us. It's just up to us how many pages we will flip. and how much we will uh, you know bring out of it like the entire vedantic philosophy says that there is nothing which can be taught to an individual it is all within us we just have to make an effort that from outside forces those things get pulled out so children should experiment different things should live their school years school years are by far i think the most important time in life no one is judging you If today if i want to play a sport it may not be very easy but as a little child it's okay you know you it's easier to fall no one is going to be you you get you know more opportunities as a kid so tap those opportunities don't say nahi karna kar lo acha nahi hua koi baat nahi never mind ya sikhenge ya jeet jayenge kuch to hoga so either win or learn both the things are very very good in life now you you were so you were saying about um, you know your brothers in the school so uh, yeah. did you come across situation where you know uh, girls are trying to you know be very friendly because you know they they want to get uh, you know get become friends with your brother as a situation oh yes yeah as <laughs> like you know i had the elder one you know somebody wants mm-hmm. to get friendship you know uske classmate mere uh, younger one ko chocolates dete rehte hain so you had situations like this Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, uh, there was this girl in school, and my both my brothers are very good looking. So she did not know that this boy is my brother. He mm-hmm. was like an extremely bright boy in school, and you know, quite uh, in his own area. Somehow I don't know why she couldn't link that the two of us are brother sisters. And she's like telling me, Anshu Didi, do you know ये लड़का इतना you know अच्छा था you know था. I said yeah, I know, I know. So she's like. आप कैसे जानते हो आई आप मेरे घर में रहता है मेरा भाई है सो आई थिंक दैट वाज क्वाइट एन एम्बेसिंग मोमेंट फॉर दैट गर्ल एंड लाइक वाज आई रिमेंबर यू नो इफ लेट्स से इन माय ओन बैच सम बॉय वुड इवन रेज हिज बॉयज फील्ड में कुछ मुझे बोल दे सो यू नो माय ब्रदर्स फ्रेंड्स वुड कम एंड हिट हिम सो दीस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स हैपेंड इन स्कूल डेज आई आई हैड दिस यू नो पल्टन ऑफ भाई आई डिड नॉट हैव टू ब्रदर्स everyone who was their friend was also my brother so basically i had this whole so long all... <laughs> uh, protectors and brothers and pattern of uh, brothers in school so it is nice in many many ways because i was protected hmm. uh, protected a bit too much but chalo protected yeah we have one more question from shilpa um, you know she is asking do you think the current uh, education system in india is moving towards the segregated society they like to go to one school and form their own uh, group helping each other in the process i mean no offense but uh, with a genuine concern uh, this system has affected uh, the western world quite a lot so uh, there is i think it's a beautiful question there is a lot of merit in what she is saying but you know in a country like ours uh, what is the choice you know i have been to us europe i've seen schools in singapore across the world and there also uh, the government schools which are so much like our public schools they're all funded by the government and the level of education is it is uh, at the same level like we do in our country with public schools and then there are private schools you know where uh, not too many people send their children and it is extremely out of reach for a large section of society so these kind of divides will stay and instead of uh, debating about it how can we get a com- society where everything is going to just become equal i think the bigger thing in our hand is whatever reaches us you know as a principal i know there are 2000 children in my campus so let me work with those 2000 
let me ensure that everything which is in them can be you know uh, brought out and they can be given the best exposure possible because then to think school to school may not be really something which one individual or you know someone at our position could do that would be national policies they need changes yes i think education by far is one sector where mm. the government needs to take very very serious steps uh, it may be a very strong statement saying it here but then i would say that you know instead of having all kind of reservations here and there ensure that there is 100 percent education in this country come what may every human being every one who is born on indian soils is taught is sent to a school gets the opportunity to go to high school and college if that is done why would we need reservations i don't even see the point in that but uh, that needs a national framework that uh, cannot happen at our level we think we dream we are talking about it and i hope god willing some day we will be heard our thoughts will be taken into consideration we might have some change that change has to come thank you ma'am and uh, the next question i mean with the responsibility there there is also uh, a lot of things that come across uh, so do you do you come across any fear of responsibility ke sath with fear of especially at this particular situation uh yes uh, not that uh, that fear actually kind of grips me and stops me from doing what i'm doing but you know at home uh, ask any mother how worried she is about even the two children who are there kab kon bimar ho jayega kisko chot lag jayegi kya emotional needs chal rahi hain bachchon ki you know we all worry i have 2000 so i don't know which floor which room what's happening you know something may happen at some point and some place in school mm. uh, that may become an area of concern we have like 30 buses running here and there you know these campuses are really big so just to feel yeah i have my eyes my teachers are my eyes and they're all doing a beautiful job in taking care of children but whenever it comes to taking care of children there is always that you know a little worry because it's a very very responsible task you know someone has given us apne dil ka tukda they have sent that child who means everything to them to our campus so we also have to keep that child with the same love and care we have to give our 100% to that child and ensure that the best happens so in doing that i just worry that you know there are certain things which may not be in our control so mm. those those little factors they do trouble you you know you know you never know in today's time one child saying one thing to another child now that's something you know even that can have a lifetime uh, you can say an impact, impact. Yeah. on the child you know so there are so many situations to look into you know do we try and do a lot of counselings we try and tell children about a lot of things still you know even the child who says that let's say you know there is someone who's a victim and someone who's trying to victimize him we don't even know his background so what is the reason that he is saying it so there is so much you know there are 2000 families actually which are there house there because the children bring all those imprints in the school hmm. so to work from that angle to think of all that yes there there are challenges and so i think I'm being aware of them is very important yeah that's true uh what what is the similarity you found uh, in hotel management and you know your profession as a teacher or a principal the education uh, this thing hospitality to uh, education in the industry what is that one? i think uh, a whole lot though initially when i was i think hired in a school no one really saw that i have this kind of a degree mm-hmm. but i think it has been a blessing more than a blessing it has been my cutting edge you know the kind of subjects that you study in hotel management it's like i had an additional language i learned french so a lot of people you know third and sanskrit of course i learned in school so look at it like i could i at least know four languages apart from that things like law management you know these are subjects which are taught business so these are certain things i was a science student Mm. and of course uh, uh, from science i moved on to humanities because i moved and i, w- I first did my mc and then i did my mass communication 
so uh, it has opened up this uh, you know stream of commerce so when it comes to grade 11 and 12 i can actually go and observe a science class uh, humanities class because my masters and phd are both in humanities and then i can even see a commerce class because i learned accountancy i learned business studies in hotel management and then you know uh, i think in my times at least hotel management was the only college which was probably actually talking about life skills there was yes. some emphasis on or uh, talking right you know walking in the right way being dressed in a certain way those kind of things i think they always help you in life you know and then hospitality i think we are also in a service industry i mean uh, today in today's time many many industries have become that if i'm not aware of what my parents are thinking hmm. then i don't think the schools work in the right way so they may be customer friendly we are parent friendly and uh, many, many operations in hotels like stock taking and, you know, SOPs and, you know, how the washrooms are clean and how there is a page which is stuck behind the, you know, the behind door. The so I have got all that in my campus because I learned it there. And I, I think that's a very systemized way of doing it. So I think just it opens up a lot for you. The, you uh, widen your horizon. It's been a blessing. I'm very happy. I learned, I did that course. I think that's one of the very good decisions I took. Despite the fact I never stayed in the hotel industry, I think it has helped me as a human being and professional. It really has helped me. So what, what's your favorite restaurant uh, in the location you live in and uh, your favorite cuisine? Uh, I have a very wide palate. I am such a person that even if I make uh, gobi aloo next time, I want to make it in a different way. So I wouldn't really actually pinpoint at anything. I like variety and I like, uh, you know, all kind of whether it's Thai or Chinese or Italian or name it. And I would, I'm ready to experiment and I'm ready to eat different cuisines. And, you know, I also have a taste for it. It's not just about going to a Thai restaurant, eating Thai food. I actually even enjoy it. So I, I love eating out. I love cooking also. I like to try new dishes. So will not point anyone, but uh, I think everyone is doing a good job. And there's a huge variety which is there in Gurgaon. You have the cyber bars, mm. which is like uh, you know bubbling with restaurants and name it. And every uh, other restaurant or five star is there in the town now. So there's access to a lot. When I was growing up, that wasn't the scene. Yeah, yeah, a lot, lot of opportunities, a lot of uh, startup. Yeah. Uh, you know, people who wanted to explore cuisine, you know, different cuisines are across every city now. So, which is, which is yeah. really these options were not. I mean, Gurgaon, Delhi, they've become like uh, metros, international metros, I would say. <laughs> you know, if you've lived in Delhi, you can pretty much live anywhere in the world. It trains you for that. What's your favorite holiday destination? And, you know, where would you love to go after uh, this lockdown or pandemic ends? Uh, give me a choice. I'll go and meet my daughter. She's posted in Jammu. Uh, you know, yeah, it's very heartwarming to be with your children. But as a holiday destination, I would say I like quieter places. Uh, but I pretty much, again, like all the places. I think my vacation in US was very, very nice. So if I have to pinpoint any one vacation, I would say a few days that I spent in US. I think they were very good. I think the environment, I think I loved it. The air and water was absolutely clean. So that was the biggest thing which I enjoyed about US. And then of course, it has it other it other highlights too. Great, ma'am. That, that, that finishes the rapid fire question. Now coming to the main question. Uh, if you become the chief minister, so what, what are the areas you would focus on? And number one, it'll be a very bad decision. Because if there's something that I don't understand, it is politics. You know, neither I understand uh, school politics, nor do I understand national, international politics. I think I'm a little radical thinker, to be very honest. And I think a lot of emphasis needs to be paid on education, mm -hmm. health. You know, those are two sectors which are completely ignored in the country. You know, we have so many taxpayers. So mm -hmm. I think government should look into some benefits for the taxpayers also. You know, at least certain societies, you know, certain section of the society, they need to give out health care and food 
and good health that needs to be made available to every human being that should be the basic criteria it was very sad when this uh, lockdown and covid situation arise and there were hundreds and thousands of people who were on foot trying to reach back to their homes i think that was very sad that in speak of us as a very good and developed country we should have looked into their welfare and we before even the lockdown we should have understood that there are people who probably if they don't get up the next day you know they will not be able to even cook in their homes so some facilities should have been thought for them so my heart goes out to that section of society and education and health which both need a lot of development reaching out to everyone just each and every one no one should be uneducated no one should say that okay i did not get a particular health care those th two things are i think they literally are the fundamental things in life if you have to live you need these basic things in life so those are things i would really look at cool ma'am so finally i mean uh, as a closing thing do you have any suggestions for parents uh, students who are exploring i mean i've seen lot of uh, new talent which has come up uh, you know like this one minute cm also started after uh, you know during the pandemic and i see a lot of students who you know posting cooking sessions doing oh, yes. videos and all that so any any and also teachers for joining a lot of workshops this is as you mentioned they, it is new they never imagined that they will have to do online classes there are oh, a lot of workshops learning so everybody the parents are trying to uh you know handhold the kids where they want to do something on the online platforms the teachers are trying to do something you know students are doing so you know please please uh, some yeah. suggestions for that i think uh, this lockdown has opened up a lot for everyone i think we always went around saying i don't have time now mm -hmm. at least no one can say that so everyone can attend like i get at least 5 to 6 invites for different zoom sessions webinars so we can reach out and we can learn a lot you know adversity is the mother of all inventions this time will pass like they say you no know, this too shall pass tough times don't last tough people do so make yourself tough take care of your health and you know become a better human being have you know health is important but being a good human being look inwards do things that you never had time for you know you've always been saying i would do it later you have a book on the shelf that you bought and never read this is the time read it you want to do engage your children in some kind of an activity do that make it like a family time bring children together even when cooking is happening i think i would like my son as of late has just picked up so many things you know just because he's here in the lockdown and i tell them many times i tell him many times like go to the kitchen just fetch something get something so they can actually fix a lot of things for themselves we are constantly you know telling them that they don't have to get into an area tell them they can get into any area you know this is a tough time which we as adults have to you know somehow make sense of it and move ahead likewise we don't know what's going to happen in with our children which college which university which country they will have to live in so we have to train them as global citizens we have to train them as very very you know a fulfilling human beings we have to make our education very holistic so in every respect there is time to learn grow i think you no one should sleep telling himself ki i he did not learn anything for the day it's a complete waste of a lockdown day i mean every time every day when you sleep at night you should tell yourself okay good aaj ke liye to bahut seekh liya kuch to gyan ka knowledge ka skill ka quota has come in me so get more skills get more knowledge read learn grow 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 because life is like an inclined plane trust me if we don't keep pushing ourselves if we don't keep growing then we will just slide back and that's something we can't afford to do so parents enjoy your time with the children ye bhi wapas nahi aayega you know like covid will go away this lockdown will go away and we will have beautiful memories of all these days so make it nice and pleasant and beautiful and just tell yourself oh those three months to 10 refresher course ho gaye <laughs> that would be good okay ma'am uh, before we say goodbye there is a question from dr munnanali girl uh, she is saying what is uh, uh, 
Uh, she wants to know about, uh, say, buy to goodbye about your book. So can you throw some okay. light? Uh, so, you know, actually, at the end of every journey, we say a goodbye. You know, like even when you end this interview, you will say a bye and a goodbye. I mean, let's say a bye to goodbye. So that means we always keep reconnecting. We always keep meeting and we all stay, you know, the same way. So nothing has to feel sad or unhappy because this is a bye, goodbye. We just convert that goodbye into a bye. Let's meet again. Okay. So that I is what I want to say. I'll say bye, not goodbye at the end of this session. Yeah. So we say that, you know, we will stay connected. Yeah, stay connected. Cool. So thanks, ma'am. Thanks for uh, taking time out. Uh, it's really awesome. I mean, love your journey, you know, your achievements and your humbleness, uh, the way you have been, uh, you know, teaching or inspiring other teachers and other schools. So I'm sure you're setting an example with uh, the skills which you have learned. So thanks a lot and uh, all the best with whatever you're doing. And I hope uh, this, this journey is a lot of learning for all of us, parents, teachers, students. And thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure connecting. Though initially I was very skeptical with your <laughs> rapid fire, but I think it was nice talking to you. Uh, I, I'll be happy if I can connect with any larger community of educationists and if there's anything that people want to know. I think because uh, it's a time has come when collaborative approach is much needed. So let's yes. reach out to each other for whatever help and let's stay connected. Yeah, let's stay connected, man. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, friends.